Hi everybody, it's May 25, 2018. I posted this video about a week ago, Five Dead from Manufactured Tornadoes and Macro Bursts in New York and Connecticut. And I received several comments from people saying, I live in this area, tornadoes are common. And some of them were uh, filled with these insults and obscene language that I took them off. I received this comment today. Tornadoes occur here often, not a freak event, just a common occurrence. Honestly, honestly. When people have to qualify what they say with honestly, that's when you have to question what they say. But I received this link. What is this link to? Metro Alley? On Metro Alley's channel, they have the trailer to a tornado awareness film an independent film that raises awareness within Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New York of an occurrence many residents consider rare. Besides the traditional tornado alley of the Southern Plains, extremely violent and destructive tornadoes have frequently impacted this highly populated region, Metro Alley. I was born and raised in New York. I lived in Massachusetts. Uh, for just under two decades. I lived in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, which borders Connecticut. Tornadoes are rare. When you have many residents in the area who have lived there for their entire life or long periods of time, they know that tornadoes are rare. But this independent filmmaker decided to post a to tornado awareness film telling all of the residents, including myself, that our reality, our perception, our knowledge, our experience is wrong. He is right. Tornadoes frequently impact this area. Okay. It reminded me of a video that I listened to yesterday. Deborah Tavares interviewing a targeted individual, Barbara Harrison, and it's heartbreaking to listen to this woman, what her life turned into. I will link below. Targeting is real. Very real. And thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people are living a nightmare. And then they have to face all of those who just don't believe them and think that they're crazy. It's very hard when you face over and over and over again people claiming that you're lying, exaggerating, or that you're just crazy. It only creates more harm. But gaslighting. In this interview, Deborah Tavares speaks about gaslighting, global gaslighting. We're all being gaslighted. This is gaslighting. This independent filmmaker wants us all to question our reality and well reject our reality and take on his reality which is not the truth. That's gaslighting. And I also have to wonder if they're now going to be putting out a tornado awareness film to get people to think that we've got a metro alley just like the traditional tornado alley up in Massachusetts, New York, and Connecticut because they're going to be bringing on more tornadoes to cause an awful lot of destruction. The importance of understanding gas lighters and do understand that one does not have to be a pathological narcissist or engaged in the reshaping of our world, engaged, involved, maybe paid to gaslight, to turn everything on its head, to get people to really doubt their own reality, their own perception, their own identity, their own experience because that will create an awful lot of chaos and confusion and people just won't know what to think. It's not just uh, the, the twisted 
pathological uh, personality disordered people who engage in this. Ordinary people engage in these kinds of behaviors. Ordinary. They are usually the people who have to be right, can't take responsibility for themselves. If you call them out on behaviors or lies that they have told, then they engage in more and more lies. They will eventually get to a point where they start creating a reality that is so false, but you stand, this is crazy making behavior. And it causes an awful lot of damage. So if you understand the characteristics, you're better able to protect yourself from them. So take notes on what Deborah Tavares has to say here. Because this is going on collectively and it goes on individually and it's incredibly damaging and devastating. It's cruel to do this to people. What we are now experiencing is a worldwide gaslighting program. And what do I mean by that? Um, gaslighting is a form of persistent manipulation and brainwashing that causes victims to doubt themselves and ultimately lose our own sense of perception, identity, and self-worth. And they tell us that the term was derived from the 1944 film Gaslight. But uh, at its worst, Gaslighting is a pathological um, system that constitutes a severe form of mind control and psychological abuse. And gaslighting can occur in relationships, in the workplace, and in entire societies. That's what has happened now. I'm just going to read the seven aspects of gaslighting, the main headings to that. And then I will give you a book that you can order and read all of this in detail for yourself because I want everybody to be clearly in the knowledge of how these kinds of horrific crimes have been being perpetrated without our knowledge or consent. So it's important to know that um, the phenomenon of gas um, lighting and its very disruptive uh, Im impact on all of us. And here are just seven stages of pathological gaslighting and how it dominates victims globally. And it depends on the situation. And there are many variations in the order and the number of gaslighting stages that I'm going to tell you about right now. But number one, it's lying and exaggerating. And that is number one. Number two, it's repetition like psychological warfare and falsehoods. And this is what we're getting in the news. This is what we're hearing every single day across all media. Number three, escalate when challenged. So when called on the lies, the, the perpetrators escalate and dispute by doubling and tripling on their attacks. And number four, they wear the victims out. All of us are being worn out by continuously being kept on the offensive by gas lighting techniques all the way from corporate government leadership on down to your local city councils. Um, also, the form of codependent relationships, and the Oxford Dictionary defines codependency as excessive emotional or psychological reliance on what we believe to be true. And then giving false hope uh, is a way to manipulate. Um, and occasionally, the gaslighter will treat the victims of a society with mildness or moderation and even kindness or remorse to give the victim false hope in circumstances. And the victim might think, well, maybe he's really not that bad, or maybe things are going to get better or let's give it a chance. But they tell us to beware. The temporary mildness is often a calculated maneuver intended to instill complacency and have the victim's guard down before the next act of gaslighting begins. And with this tactic, the perpetrator 
also further reinforces the codependent relationship. We've all been, of course, subjected to this. Number seven is to dominate and control. And at its extreme, the ultimate objective of pathological gaslighting is to control, dominate, and take advantage of entire populations by maintaining and intensifying an incessant stream of lies and coercions. The, the perpetrator keeps the victim in constant state of insecurity, doubt, and fear. The perpetrator can exploit victims at will for augmentation of their power and personal gain. And this is from a book. It's called um, and entitled How to Successfully Handle Gaslighters and Stop Pathological Bullying written by Preston Nye, N-I. All of you can take a look at this and understand how we have been gaslighted on a global basis.